guys, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. I'm on episode 84. I've got loads of things that I want to share with you today. I have had a really busy, productive week of sewing. Definitely thinking about things that uh, we're going to need to go on holiday and um, things that will help to make our life a little bit easier and also um, I always like to make a few new things for my family when we're going away so I've definitely been thinking about that sort of thing so I've got lots and lots of things that I want to share with you today. Before I dive into everything that I've got to include in this video I'll let you know what I'm wearing and I'm wearing quite an old make it's the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress in this really lovely sort of ditzy floral um, blue and white fabric. I think I got this from Rainbow Fabrics years ago. Um, and this is a dress that I've had in my wardrobe just hanging up for ages and I don't reach for it very often. And I was trying to work out why I don't reach for it very often because actually it's a really comfortable dress to wear. But actually I think um, I've worked out that the elastic is just a little bit too tight on the sleeves. So it does feel a little bit uncomfortable as the day goes on because it's quite tight. So I just need to fix that. Um, it's quite an easy kind of thing to fix. So I'll just take the elastic out, put in a different length of elastic so it's not quite so tight around my arms. And then I think it's a dress that I will start reaching for. But I've got it on today. We've got family coming around for lunch. So I thought I'd put on a nice dress. Got all of my headbands in. Because my hair's at this really awkward stage. I want to get it cut and I will get it cut much shorter. I usually get it cut to about here, so a couple of inches taken off. Um, but because we're going away, I like to be able to tie my hair up when we're away, and if I get it cut before we go on holiday, um, I won't be able to do that. So it's at this really awkward, kind of irritating stage of it's just getting in my way, and I feel like my hair's bothering me, um, but I don't like growing my hair up, so I've compromised with a headband. So I've got a tie knot headband on. I've got some more earrings from Sapphire Frills. These are gorgeous. They're little clouds and they've got lightning bolts on them. Um, and then this is the Davenport dress. So it's got elastic at the top here and it creates this gorgeous sort of gathering effect. It's got this really subtle ruffle um, along the sort of shoulder. Short sleeves um, and you've got this elastic casing. And again, it creates this gorgeous little ruffle. There's a drawstring across the middle, so it brings it in. And again, you've got this sort of blousy effect at the front and the back. There's pockets, although this fabric is super busy, so you can't really see uh, the pocket. And then it's also got a ruffle on the skirt, which is just everything I love. It's really floaty, sort of swishy dress. And then that's what the back looks like. Um, it's a really lovely dress and it's a really lovely pattern. I've sewn up think three or four versions of the Davenport dress. So that is what I'm wearing. So before I share all of the things that I've been busy making, um, I just want to let you know, I did put something on my community tab, but I'm not sure how many people actually see it. Um, I just put a little note to say that I'm going to be a little bit more sporadic with the videos that come out across the summer. I'm still planning to do um, my Sunday sewing catch ups, although next Sunday will be the last one for a two week break because I'll be going away for two weeks. Um, but I will have a couple of videos that I'm hoping to get scheduled so that the weeks I don't have a Sunday sewing catch up, there'll be a Wednesday vlog. Um, but I haven't been able to get any Wednesday vlogs out for a while because I've just been too busy. Um, I've just been really enjoying spending time with Ruby and Lola and my husband and also catching up with friends. Um, because when I'm working, it's just too busy to do things like that. Obviously, I spend time with my family, um, but it's too busy to... Um, sort of catch up with as many friends as I'd like to. So yeah, we've been visiting people here, there and everywhere. So I just haven't had chance to, well, it's not so much the filming because I can film them fine. It's more the editing because the editing takes forever. And um, the filming is fine. I can put aside like half an hour to film a video. Um, but editing takes a good couple of hours to get it all edited, put images in, um, list all the links for you guys and then um, sort of upload it. It's quite a lot of time. Um, so I have got lots of videos kind of in the background, I just need to edit them. So I'm hoping when I'm away I'll be able to schedule a couple of videos. So I just wanted to update you on my blogs over the next couple of weeks. So I have been very busy this week doing lots and lots of sewing. Um, there was a couple of things I talked about last weekend that I have got around to sewing this weekend. I've also been busy doing some crochet, so I'll share that at the end. 
Um, the first thing I talked about last weekend was some water bottle bags for myself, my husband and for Ruby and Lola and I did get those sewn up and actually I sewed three for a friend that I caught up with and for her two boys as well. So I haven't got all of them here but I'll just share a couple of the water bottle bags that I did get around to sewing up and I'll link the pattern down below. It's a great pattern. I got it from Etsy, from Sunflower... I want to say it's called sunflower seams it's the coral bag i have got the pattern here yeah, sunflower seams that's the pattern i've shared it lots and lots already the coral water bottle bag so my husband chose this um fat quarter from a so heavy jane box which has got bees all over it which i thought was quite a funny choice for him because he's absolutely terrified of bees and wasps but that's the one that he chose um, so I can show you up close now because all the other ones that I'd sewn up were gifts and I'd already given them so I can show you what it actually looks like sewn up so it's a great little bag um, it's deep enough for most water bottles you've got this elastic channel at the top my favorite part is that pocket and then I've just used um, the webbing and the webbing gets caught in the bottom at the sides and you just stitch it along the top and then I've got one of those um, I don't know what you call them adjuster thingies that you put in like rucksacks and things and then on the other side there's a d-ring and then you've got another piece of webbing here you just stitch it in place i've just put across there to add a little bit of strength um and then you can pop it on and then you can also adjust uh the length of the strap as well which i think is just brilliant um so yeah that's the one that i've sewn i've made it really diddy now but that's the one that i've sewn for my husband and then for me, I had lots of fun going through my scraps and I just absolutely adored this tomato print fabric. And I was really pleased to see that I had enough left uh, to get a water bottle carrier bag out of it. Whoops. Um, so there's mine. Got the pocket at the front, exactly the same. The elastic channel at the top and then black webbing uh, with the D-ring and then the adjustable, um, I don't know what you call that, but yeah, the adjusty thing. And then the strap. So we're going to take these on holiday with us because I think it'd be really handy um, when we're exploring to pop our water bottles in there. And then there's enough space in the front for tissues or keys or wipes or, you know, who knows what. Um, but it's a really great pattern. Um, comes together really nicely. I cannot speak more highly of it. I think it was less than £5 the pattern as well. So I will link it down below. Um, perfect for scraps. All of them I've sewn so far, apart from this one, any that I use like off cuts of, of um, fabrics, but all the other ones where I've used back quarters, it takes hardly any fabric at all, especially if you buy the webbing. Um, if you don't buy the webbing and you want to use the same fabric, then you do need slightly more because the strap, as you can see, needs to be quite long. Um, but I've really enjoyed using the webbing and it's definitely speeded up the process of sewing them. Then the other thing I talked about, I think last week, was sewing up some bucket hats for myself, my husband and for my family. Now I wanted to get these bucket hats sewn up months ago um, for when we were going to a festival in May. Had them cut out and I just didn't get around to sewing them up. Um, I think life just got super busy at that time um, and I just didn't get them sewn up. But they'd been cut out and sat in a Ziploc uh, wallet bag for ages and ages and I thought actually they'll come in really, really handy. Uh, for when we're away. The pattern that I've used is the Waves and Wild Sandcastle Bucket Hat um, and this starts at newborn and goes up to adult extra large. So in terms of sizes, for my husband I sewed an adult large and then for myself, Ruby and Lola, I've got quite a small head, I sewed up the age 7 to 12 and it fits me really nicely actually. I'll take my headband off and show you one of them. I, I might put all of them on actually, I just absolutely love them. And I've really surprised myself because they're all plain, apart from the inside, of course. Um, but yeah, they're all plain on the outside. Whoops. And then I've chosen really jazzy um, lining fabric. So I've just got some pink denim that again was an off cut. These are all off cuts from projects. And then the inside is this gorgeous floral fabric. I'll pop that on so you can see. So that's the first one. I'm never sure if I suit hats, but um, I think they'll come in handy in terms of when we're out and about. And it's really, really warm when we're away. Um, this is an off cut of denim from, I got this from Felicity Fabrics. So it's choco denim. And then on the inside, I've used a viscose crepe to line it, which was from uh, Rainbow Fabrics. And I think I really love that contrast of plain with the really jazzy um, lining fabric. And actually these are reversible bucket hats. So that's the choco denim. So you could wear it the other way around if you wanted to. Um, which actually I really like. I really like that way. 
Then I've got one that's just like a Sean Bray. Um, and this is a really lightweight. My hair, every time I take a hat off, this is really lightweight. And then on the inside, it's just a cotton gingham. And again, these are reversible. Um, so yeah, this one's going to be rubies. And then I've done a green. This one's going to be mine because I love green. So it's just a denim. And then on the inside, um, this was a remnant piece of fabric from a shirt that I made for my husband a few years ago. Um, so yeah, really, really lovely. Uh, and then I've got like a really lightweight, it's like a baby cord, which is like a forest green. And on the inside, I've used a cotton lawn fabric, which I think goes really nicely. And then the final one is a slightly thicker corduroy, but it's still like a fine needle cord um, on the outside. And then on the inside, it's this gorgeous floral cotton fabric. This came together really nicely. Um, it was a really, really enjoyable sew. Um, I think I sewed them all in one evening. That's how sort of speedy they are to put together. Um, and the construction is brilliant. I would definitely recommend the Waves and Wild Sandcastle Bucket Hat. The instructions are brilliant. Didn't take up a huge amount of fabric. Um, if you've got sort of half meter off cuts of fabric, you definitely have enough there um, to sew up the bucket hat. And you could use the same fabric for the outer and the lining. I just thought I'd play around with having a bit of a contrast lining. Um, so I think they're gonna come in really handy for when we're away. And not just when we're on holiday, but I think just generally they're gonna come in handy. Lola, my youngest, really enjoys wearing bucket hats just generally anyway. Um, and I think it's going to be great that she's got lots of bucket hats to choose from. So two very practical makes. Um, let me see what else I wanted to share with you. So the next thing I wanted to share, and this has been a tradition for the last two years, I think. Um, before we go away, I sew up some holiday shirts for my husband. He normally wears quite um, solid uh, sort of colours when he is going to work or you know spending time with us at the weekend so he tends to wear sort of navy jumpers navy shirts greys blacks um all plain doesn't really go for sort of patterns and things unless I make something for him and of course I always choose something bright and colourful and generally I always choose something that's got a pattern on as well so there's a really firm favourite of a shirt pattern. I'll just grab it. It's this one. It's the McCall's M6044. I'll link it down below. I absolutely love this shirt. He really loves wearing it too. It, there's lots of different options, but he really loves option A. And actually, there's a pocket, but we never put the pocket on. He likes it really fuss-free. He likes it quite relaxed fit. Um, so I always go for the short sleeves. A really simple shirt that's got the two shirt fronts. It's got the shirt back. There's no yoke on there, but it has got a two-piece collar and then buttons down the front. There's options to sew up more complicated shirt versions. So there's ones with a yoke on the back. There's ones with um, different pockets. There's ones with longer sleeves. Um, there's the option for the sleeve placket. He just prefers when we're going away, quite a loose fitting shirt preferably in cotton or a cotton lawn, nice and breathable and really comfortable to wear. And I always have lots and lots of fun choosing fabric. So there's two fabrics that I've chosen for him. And the first one, um, when he put it on, I thought he looked like a CBBS presenter and he didn't mind me saying that actually. It's a really fun, bright, colourful, patterned fabric. And I got this from Backstitch. I fell in love with it as soon as they shared it in their stories absolutely loved it they have got this back in stock actually because when they shared it in their stories they said that it was um running low and i'd ordered i think i tried to buy three meters and then i got a call from them saying that actually they didn't have enough so i had to get two two and a half meters i think i ended up with but it was enough to sew up the shirt so you've got the um the collar and the collar stand and then the buttons i've gone for are green buttons and I think they go really nicely with they make that green sort of stand out just a simple straightforward short sleeve you've got the button placket all the way down the front and it's got an ever so slightly I don't know if you can see that but ever so slight curve on the hem as well um so that's the first shirt that I've sewn up for him I don't think I'm going to get photos of him in this shirt today um but that's the first one and then the second one, I had some of this fabric. I talked about this. If I didn't talk about this last weekend, I talked about it a few weekends ago. But it's this really amazing fabric. I think I got it from Stitch and Ink. And I ended up buying about five metres because I ordered it thinking that I'd make a dress for myself. My husband saw it, 
absolutely loved it. Um, so he asked if I could order some to make him a shirt, so I did. And then I thought, well, I'm making him a shirt, so I might as well make something for Ruby and Lola too. So I've made him a shirt, I've got a dress, and then I've made a pair of shorts for Ruby and a pair of shorts for Lola too. Um, I'm just going to quickly fasten up the buttons just so I can show you. But for this shirt, I've gone for red buttons because there's quite a lot of red in the fabric. It's a gorgeous cotton and to me, it just screams summer and especially summer holidays. There's deck chairs on there, there's pineapples, there's fish. Um, there's just some really, really fun details. I can just, I've just spotted some watermelons. I won't do all of the buttons, but just enough for you to get the idea. Um, and let me just hold it up. Um, so that's what the shirt looks like. So again, it's got the collar and the collar stand at the back. Um, short sleeves, no pockets, and I've gone for these gorgeous red buttons. I just got these from um, a local fabric shop to me. Um, and that's the shirt. And then, because I just love it when we've all got something to match. And at the moment, Ruby and Lola are just on the cusp of being okay with wearing something that kind of matches me. Um, I thought this might be the last time that I get to do something like this. So two shirts for James, which is sort of a holiday tradition now. Um, and it's something that I really look forward to doing. I'm actually quite proud of myself because we don't go away until um, we've got another week yet until we go away. And normally I'm sewing at the last minute, literally like the night before we go. Um, but I've actually sewn with a week to go, which I'm really proud of myself for. So this is the pattern, like I said, I always sew up this version. And um, because he likes a bit of room in it, his measurements, he falls in a size medium, but the top end of the medium. So 39 um, for, no, yeah, 39 for his chest um, and 34 for his waist, which is the top end of the medium size. And I know that he likes to have a bit of room. So I've actually sewn up a large for him and it gives him enough space sort of in his chest area and also around his tummy as well. And he feels really comfortable wearing that shirt. Um, if he'll put it on and let me take photos, then I'll put pictures in now. Otherwise, you'll have to wait until we've been away. He'll definitely let me get photos when we go away. So two shirts for James. Um, and then using the same fabric, I've sewn up a dress for me. I Again, this has become a bit of a tradition when we go away. I always sew up a Deer and Doe Myosotis dress um, so that I can wear it on a holiday. It's my probably, I think I'm going to say that is my favourite, favourite um, summer dress pattern. I've sewn so many, probably about 15 of the Deer and Doe Myosotis dresses. Absolutely love everything about it. It's slightly fitted on top. It's kind of like a shirt dress um, with the bodies because you've got the buttons down the front, but it's got this ever so subtle like V-neck opening. You've got the option for short sleeves or you can put a ruffle on. I've gone for the ruffle and it's got this really gorgeous like mandarin collar. I absolutely love it. And then the skirt, you can add a ruffle on the skirt as well. And it's also got pockets. So I've used exactly the same fabric. Here it is. As soon as I finished it, I put it on and I just loved it. I love everything about it. So I've gone for the ruffle on the sleeves. You've got that lovely mandarin collar. I went for the red buttons and you've just got the three buttons on that top part. So you've got that really subtle sort of opening, which makes it really comfortable. Um, gathered skirt and then it's got a ruffle on the bottom. The ruffle is optional on the bottom, but I absolutely love a ruffle. So I've gone for ruffle on the sleeves and ruffle on the skirt as well. Now, something to say about this fabric. I don't know if it was me. I don't know if anyone else has got this fabric and they found the same. But I had two incidents where this fabric ripped. I tried the bodice on um, because even though I took my measurements and I sewed up um, the, the sort of top to match my measurements, I always like to try it on before I construct the skirt just to check that it does fit and the darts all in the right place and things. So I found that the top fit me really nicely. I had enough room. Um, it wasn't like super tight or anything. But then when I was taking it off over my head, I just heard this rip and it ripped um, at the back. I've had to do a very discreet, hopefully it's discreet, um, sort of repair here. You can just see a line down there, but the fabric ripped as I was taking it off. So I've had to do, because it looked like it was going to fray as well, I had to do a really, really, really mini, and if you can see that French seam on the inside. And hopefully, I mean, my hair will cover it anyway when I wear it, but if anyone's noticing that, they're far too close to me. But yeah, I had to do a little repair on it, so I was a bit sad about that. And then when I was sewing up the shorts, I think it's this pair, yeah. When I was sewing up the shorts and I was... Um, top stitching the pocket here 
again they ended up with a big hole in the fabric so I've ended up having to cover it up I don't know if you can see that but I've ended up covering it up um, with some flower um, sort of decorative stitching and you can't see on the other side of the hole so hopefully it will hold it in place but yeah I just found this fabric was quite delicate it was more delicate than I was expecting it to be so these are the shorts that I've sewn up I can't show you rubies because they've got them on at the moment which goes to show how much um, sort of they like wearing them and also how comfortable they are as well and um, so I've just used the Tilling the Buttons SD shorts pattern um, and that's what they look like. I sewed, uh, I sewed up the Tilly and the Buttons size one, I think it is, which is a UK six for them both, so that they've got enough wiggle room um, to grow and I can just adjust the elastic. And I made the elastic um, longer than it needed to be and I've just overlapped it in the waistband for both of them so that when they grow, I can just unpick the waistband um, and let out the elastic so that they can wear them for a bit, little bit longer. But it's just this pattern, the Tilly and the Buttons SD, and I've just done the shorts version. So I'm just tucking my pattern in where I've traced it off. So I've just done the shorts version for both of them. They're a really lovely, relaxed fit pattern. Really, really roomy um, on the leg as well. Um, they've both got patch pockets on the back. Um, so Lola's got flower top stitching because of that rip. Um, and then I've replicated that on either side of the other pocket. And then because it's in exactly the same fabric, I wanted them both to be able to identify their own pair of shorts. Um, uh, so on rubies, I have put a snake um, patch that I bought from Liberty. Um, I think I bought it at Christmas time, actually. I have popped that on the pocket so that they can figure out which pair of shorts belongs to them. So I'm really thrilled that we've all got matching garments and hopefully I'll get a photo when we're away. Um, what else have I been busy doing? Oh, the other thing, which was an unexpected make, this came in the summer project box from Hey So Sister, um, uh, I was gonna say a month ago, a year ago. So it was last summer's project box from Hey So Sister and I bought it very excitedly. You don't know what's in it um, and it's a seasonal project box. So it's generally what's in there matches that season. Um, and the pattern that came was the Chalk and Knot Marcel. Yeah, it's called the Marcel Tank and Dress. Um, absolutely loved everything about this. I think I must have been too busy last summer to get it sewn up and then the seasons changed. There are three different options. You can sew up this full maxi length. You can do a shorter midi dress or you can do a little crop top. I have gone for this version and we were in the box. There was enough fabric to sew up the maxi length version just love the shape of this dress and the fabric that was included was a viscose linen fabric which was this gorgeous red and white tiny little striped fabric this pattern's amazing i absolutely loved sewing it up the instructions are brilliant the construction is really interesting because you've got a front skirt panel here and then you have a back skirt panel which is exactly the same and then you've got all these different tiers and it's exactly the same on the back as well. So there's five tiers for the maxi dress. There's three tiers for the midi dress. And then for the top, um, you've just got one tier either side of the front panel and the back panel. And then you've got this really interesting sort of, they call it a bodice, but it's just basically a thin bit of fabric that goes across um, sort of the top of your bust sort of here and then your lower back. The straps hide your bra, which is brilliant. And I just love this sort of really floaty, flowy style of the dress, absolutely beautiful. So when I was working out my sizes, it put me in a size four, because my bust is a 34 inch. My bust does sometimes fluctuate depending on the time of the month. Um, so I'd already cut out the pattern, I'd already cut out the fabric last summer. But like I said, I think the season, I think the weather changed and I just didn't get around to sewing it up. So it was, again, left in one of my Ziploc bags. So I got it out. It's great discovering a project that's all ready to go. Um, and yeah, I'd already cut out a four, but I did have some of this fabric left in my fabric stash. I think I had about half a metre of it left. So I sewed up the bodice part, which is this section here. Uh, it might be better to show you on this, this section here. Um, so yeah, that's view A, which is the maxi dress. So I'd sewed up the bodice and I based it on the straps and I tried it on and it was so tight, it really squashed me. 
So I'm really fortunate that I still had some of this fabric left. So I had to recut it and I recut it in a size six and now it fits me really nicely. I've actually got a little bit of room at the side. So I'm just gonna wear it and see how it feels. Um, and if that, it's a tiny weeny, like half a centimetre either side where it just gapes ever so slightly. If that seems to bother me, um, then I'm going to unpick and restitch that section down because that won't take too long. Um, but I'd rather have that than have it really tight. It was like really squashing me. So I'm really glad that I twirled that part of the dress. Um, but here it is. I absolutely love it. I've played around with the stripes um, ever so slightly. Right, so that's the front and that's the back. And I've played around with the stripes because I've got the stripes going down for the centre front and the centre back, but then all of the tiers, I've got the stripes going across. It's really tricky to show you actually on camera, but yeah, I've got all the stripes going across for the tiers, but for that front panel, um, the, the stripes are going down and it's a really subtle sort of contrast. I'm not sure if you're able to pick that up. Um, I will put some pictures in of me wearing this dress, um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. It's really, really floaty and just feels so lovely to wear so I'm going to take this on holiday with us and I loved the process of sewing it so much that I've already cut out my next version and I'll share that at the end what I'm going to be sewing up um, the next version what fabric I'm going to be using for the next version but yeah unexpected make um, wasn't on my radar at all I was going through my fabrics to find some fabric for the Lucille dress still haven't worked out what fabric I'm going to use because it needs quite a lot of fabric um, but I really want to get that sewn up as well before we go away. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed sewing this up. I would highly, highly recommend this pattern if you haven't tried it before. It was such an enjoyable sew. Absolutely loved everything about it. It comes in sizes 0 to 30. I should have said that. Um, and in terms of fabrics, it's designed for a light to medium weight woven fabric with a nice drape. A minimum fabric width of 137 centimetres and that's required for the midi dress which is view A. Um, recommended fabrics are rayon chalice, rayon crepe, rayon voile, cotton lawn, cotton voile, cotton shirting, linen and double gauze. Ooh, double gauze isn't my favourite fabric but I think that would work really nicely for this pattern. Um, yeah, those are the views. Um, so you've got view A, view B and view C. But yeah, really, really loved everything about this pattern. So I'd highly recommend it. The final two things that I've been sewing are swimwear for myself. And I've got plans next week to sew up some more swimwear. I'm just waiting for some patterns to arrive in the post. Um, I've got them copy shop printed. I am going to be really honest. I didn't enjoy sewing up either of these swimsuits. I will wear them. Um, I'm happy with the way that they have turned out in the end, but I really didn't enjoy the process of sewing them up. I consider myself quite a confident sewer. I feel like I've sewn quite a few different um, sort of levels of difficulty in terms of garments. You know, I feel quite confident sewing up shirts. I've sewn denim jackets. I've sewn coats. I've sewn swimwear before and I wasn't really expecting to come, not come unstuck because I did manage to figure it out. But I just didn't enjoy the process of sewing either of these patterns. They're two patterns by Edgewater Avenue, um, which are predominantly swimwear patterns. They've got other patterns on their website, but they predominantly sell swimwear patterns. They're two patterns that I've talked about. One of them, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't sure how I would feel wearing it because it is quite revealing. And then the other one, I was really excited about sewing it up um, because I was quite excited about using two fabrics together. So let's start with, and they're both going to be really difficult to show you what they look like. The orange leopard print one, I haven't got a photo of me. I don't think I will put photos when I do wear it on holiday. I don't think I, I don't know. We'll see. It's quite revealing. Um, anyway, I had this fabric I think I got from Stitch and Ink. You can see how skimpy it is by how I'm holding it up. I found the instructions quite sparse. I found the instructions um, quite confusing. I found the pictures that they used for the instructions really confusing as well. Um, and I just didn't enjoy the process of sewing either of the patterns. Um, this one, I adjusted the pattern pieces. So I put some line drawings in of it now. I think this one's the Talia pattern. Let me just double check. So this one's the Talia pattern, which was the quite revealing. It had like this plunging kind of um, detail here at the bust. Um, it had cutout. Did it have cutouts here? 
I'll put it on over my dress, not that you're going to really be able to see, but um, it covers the bust, but it is, it's quite revealing as you can see. And then obviously it has got the cutout detail as well. The, the sort of pants section were meant to be really sort of high leg pants, but I've adjusted the pattern. I redrew it basically to ensure that I had a bit more coverage on the front. And then the same for the back because the back was meant to be like a thong and I knew that I would not wear a swimsuit that had like a thong detail. So I've ended up giving myself just a little bit more coverage on the back as you can see and then definitely more coverage on the front as well. Um, and it is really, really revealing. It's got this really gorgeous, what I absolutely loved about it actually was this really beautiful um, like tie detail on the back. Um, I will wear it and I'll enjoy wearing it on holiday. Um, we're staying in a villa so nobody else will be around so I will definitely wear it. If we were going somewhere more public I wouldn't wear it because it is very very revealing. Um, yeah it's got this really gorgeous detail on the back as well um, and the back is very revealing. Um, it would have been more so had I not drafted that back piece for a bit more coverage on my bottom. Um, yeah I didn't enjoy the sewing process. I found it really confusing. I didn't find the instructions very clear. Um, and I found the pictures that went with the instructions really confusing as well. I put that down to the swimsuit just being very different to, to what I've sewn before. I've sewn swimming costumes before, I've sewn bikinis before. Um, I put it down to it just being very different to what I'd sewn before. Um, and I know that we are spoiled quite often with really detailed pattern company instructions like Friday Pattern Company, Helen's Closet, Tilly and the Buttons. They're all brilliantly written. So I am used to sewing quite basic. Um, I'm used to sewing patterns with really basic instructions. It was more that just the instructions didn't feel to me very clear. So then I moved on to the Marley swimsuit, which I was really excited about. That was a two, it's not a two piece, but it looks like a two piece. That was an asymmetrical um, sort of swimming costume. And it's um, one shoulder and then you've got like this band that covers the bust. That's got like a cutout on the side and then you've got the pants as well. The pants are quite more revealing on the back actually than I thought they were going to be. Um, but I got myself in such a tiz sewing this up. I just found the instructions so confusing. I didn't enjoy the process at all. I'm really, really pleased with the finished results and I took a really awful um, selfie in my bedroom using my tripod. So I'll put that in now because I have got a selfie of me wearing this. Um, but yeah, this is what it's ended up like. And I was super excited about using this fabric with the lilac fabric. Um, the pants at the front you can see are wider than they are at the back. You do still get quite a lot of coverage with this section, but you can see that it's not quite a thong, but it is, it, you know, it's quite narrow on the bottom area at the back. I just got myself in a tiz. I found the instructions, the pictures that went with the instructions for this really confusing and actually I should have just gone with my own kind of um, sewing experience and what felt right for me rather than trying to follow and match the picture to what I was doing because I ended up sewing one seam at one point I ended up sewing five times and every time I sewed it wrong and I think it's because I was just paying really close attention to what the images looked like and the images they were just really really confusing I found the whole process quite stressful. I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, so I'm not going to be revisiting either of these patterns. Um, but I have got a swimsuit pattern, the um, Zara bikini and swimming costume pattern from Sew Over It. Um, I sent that to be copy shop printed and that is arriving hopefully in the next couple of days. And I've got some more fabric that I'm going to be um, using to sew up a bikini top and bottoms. And then I'm going back to my um, trusty Helen's Closet Sandpiper two-piece swimming costume, sort of two-piece two set. I keep saying two-piece. It's like a really lovely like sports top um, with the option for high-waisted pants. And I'm going to be sewing swimsuits for Rubes and swimsuits for Lola. Um, Ruby wants high-waisted and then a thick band on the top so it ends up looking like a full swimsuit. Lola, I think, wants the high-waisted pants and then the top that's got a narrow band and then they've chosen some fabric as well from my stash. Um, I love sewing the Sandpiper swimming costume from Helen's Closet. The instructions are impeccable, comes together beautifully. 
um, all of the sewing sort of um, techniques make sense to my brain. So I'm going to go back to using a tried and tested pattern and also try the Sew Over at Zara bikini because their instructions are always really clear as well. So I'll let you know how I get on with the Zara bikini once the pattern arrives and I can get that sewn up. But yeah, I didn't enjoy sewing up the Marley or the Talia um, swimming costumes at all. Found the instructions really confusing. So that's everything that I've been sewing up this week. Um, a bumper week of sewing, but I've definitely been thinking about sewing for family and friends and also just preparing for going away as well. And then the other exciting thing that I got finished I'm trying to think if I'd, I hadn't finished it last weekend, was my um, market bag, which I have been crocheting. Um, it has been a real labour of love. I've absolutely loved every step of, I was going to say sewing, every step of crocheting this. I've used it so much already. How beautiful is that? So many hours of work that have gone into making this bag and it is incredible, the things that you can fit in it. I'm just going to stand up and show you because I'm super, super proud of this. It stretches brilliantly. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the process of crocheting this. It's so beautiful. The handles really tested me um, because they're actually a tube. I don't know if that's obvious to you, but it's actually a tube of fabric. Um, and the step to crochet that really confused me. Um, I don't know if you've ever had this when you've been sewing. I've definitely had these moments in sewing where I cannot get my head around a step for whatever reason. Maybe it's late at night, maybe I've been sewing for a few hours and I just need a break. So I find leaving it, turning off my machine, have a cup of tea, have a shower, go to sleep, come back to it the next day and then it just clicks and I can do it. So I found that with this technique, all of that crocheting, loved, 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 really got it, really understood it, really understood this section and this section. But when it came to forming the tube, I felt really confused and I just couldn't get it. So I put it down, had a cup of tea and I didn't pick it back up for another couple of hours. Then I picked it back up, watched the video tutorial again and I managed to do it. So I sat for a good couple of hours and crocheted the handles and then I attached them. Um, and yeah, I keep using this bag because I just absolutely love it. And it's been so handy. I took it fabric shopping and I managed to get, um, there's two pieces of fabric I'll share with you in a minute, but I managed to get those in this bag. I took it grocery shopping and I've got lots of fruit and veg in there. And it's amazing how much it stretches, but then it goes back to its original shape. Um, so yeah, really proud of that make and I've got photos so I'll put in pictures of me holding my bag, super proud. And then the other thing that I've been busy crocheting, I've been doing a gauge, I don't know if that's what you call it, I'm um, basically testing the size of a granny square. These are the colours that I'm going for, so pink, blue, yellow, purple, orange and green. And I um, crocheted the first granny square and it was far too small. So I think I must have quite a tight tension when I'm crocheting because I was about four centimetres off what it needed to be. So I used a bigger crochet hook um, and I've managed to get it more of the size that it needs to be. So those are what the um, granny squares are going to look like. I think I've got to crochet 45 of them. So I'm going to take the wool on holiday with me with my crochet hooks, which I'm very excited about. And then the granny square that I did as a tester, which was too small, you'll see the difference um, between the two here. I've kept on going with this one. Um, in the end, I have decided it's too beautiful not to use it. So I'm going to keep on crocheting until it's the size I want. And then I saw an idea on Pinterest where somebody had made a denim jacket, but the back panel was a crochet granny square. So I'm going to keep on going with this until it's big enough. You can see I've just started on adding I need to weave in my end but I've just started adding the green um, for the next layer of the granny square so I'm just going to keep on doing that until it's big enough and then probably in the autumn term the autumn term probably when we get into the autumn then I will start to think about constructing a denim jacket I think I'm just going to go classic blue denim jacket unless I can find some denim that matches one of these colors I just had an idea there um I'd love to get some denim that's like this green colour, um, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to use that granny square to put in the back of a denim jacket. So still really, really enjoying the crochet. I have got a vest 
crochet pattern but I think that might be a little bit beyond my skill level at the moment but um, it's just a PDF pattern that I've got on my phone so obviously I can take that with me when we go away and I'm going to take lots of wool in my suitcase as well so that I can keep on practicing um, and I'm going to take some crochet on the plane as well because um, it's about a four hour flight I think it is um, so I can do some crochet on the plane as well so really really enjoying crochet still so the next thing I wanted to share with you was some fabric so there's two pieces of fabric that I have bought and I got these from a local fabric shop because I wanted to go into a fabric shop to choose some fabric to make the bowl bag that I'm going to be sewing up for my father-in-law. And I knew that it needed to be quite a thick, sturdy canvas, so I needed to be able to feel it really. And um, so I took Lola with me and she helped me to choose this gorgeous kind of geometric triangle um, canvas fabric. And whilst I was there, I got two meters. I don't think I'm gonna need two meters. Um, if I hold, can I hold it up? Yeah, it's quite a thick fabric. I don't know if you can tell how thick that is. It's got no stretch at all. Um, but I thought whilst I was getting some, I might as well order enough, not order. I thought I might as well buy enough to um, use some for the backpack. So the noodle head, what's it called? The making backpack, which I shared last weekend. Um, I'm gonna use this for that backpack for me as well, but I'm not in a hurry to construct that backpack yet. But that's the fabric I'm going to be using for the bowls bag. And whilst I was there, I just got some black and white gingham fabric because one of my friends, um, I met up with them probably about a month ago now, and they were wearing the most gorgeous dress. Um, I actually texted her later and said, where did you get that dress from? Because I just loved the style of it. And she said mango. So I went on a hunt to see if I could find the dress. The bit that I loved the most, I think it was sheer, it had a sheared bodice. And then the back was open and it had these gorgeous like sheared straps. I think they were just regular straps at the front and then they crossed over at the back. If I've got a picture of it, I'll put a picture in now so you can see what it looks like. And I'd really love to try and replicate that dress. So I've bought some black gingham fabric so that I can try and replicate that dress. Uh, not sure when I'm going to get around to doing that, um, but I'm going to try and draft my own pattern pieces to try and copy that gorgeous gingham dress that my friend was wearing. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was a pattern that's just been released. It's not a pattern that I've bought, but it's a pattern that I fell in love with. And I'm not going to buy it because I've got too many patterns um, in my stash. I'm just going to gaze at it longingly when I see them all popping up on Instagram because it's absolutely gorgeous. A pattern by Helen's Closet and it's called the Lawrence Dress and Top. There are three different views. View A is a dress that stops at your knee. View B is like a, I think it's a maxi length, so it stops at your ankle. Um, view A, which is the dress that stops at your knee, has got two tiers. Um, view B, which is the maxi, has got three tiers. And then view C is a lovely little top. Um, it comes in sizes 0 to 34, and that's split into a B cup, 0 to 22, or a D cup, 12 to 34. Um, it's a really lovely sort of relaxed fit garment. So you get that relaxed fit regardless of the style of the dress or the top. Um, it's got this gorgeous v-neck detail, optional shoulder ruffle, which I absolutely love. Um, the option, like I said, for the two different skirt lengths for the dress, so the two or the three gathered tiers. It's got bust darts and then it's got a facing to finish the neckline as well. I absolutely love this dress version. I think it's beautiful. Um, I've got lots of patterns in my stash that I could probably use elements of to create this so I'm not going to buy the pattern even though I absolutely love it and that's purely because I've got too many patterns um, and I'm trying to be really good and sort of restrain myself. Um, in terms of fabrics they recommend lightweight um, woven fabrics like a linen, a cotton, a tensile or a twill. Um, and yeah, I just love everything about this pattern. Um, I've seen some versions already popping up on Instagram and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. It looks really lovely and floaty. It's got lots of gathered tears, which I love, and it's got that gorgeous ruffle detail as well. And um, so I link it down below. I think there might still be 20% off at the moment when um, Helen's Closet release patterns is always a discount when they first get released. So I think that discount still applies at the moment so i link it down below so you can go and check it out if you haven't already so the next thing i wanted to mention was a youtuber so it's the sewing bear 27 who is the lovely claire so she's new to youtube 
Um, she's only got a handful of subscribers at the moment um, and it'd be really great if you could all go over and give her a little follow, subscribe to her channel. She's got two videos on her channel at the moment, a sort of hello um, and sewing gift ideas and a catch up video as well. It'd be really great if you could follow the link that I put in the description down below to go and give Claire a little follow, subscribe to her channel and watch her little videos and maybe give her a little comment with some words of encouragement because I know it's quite scary when you first start blogging or when you're still trying to sort of build up your blogger sort of community um, and I've really enjoyed watching those two videos so I thought I'd give the Sewing Bear 27 a little mention. And then the final thing that I like to finish with, I know this video is a bump video, um, it's always my sewing plans. It is the summer break at the moment. I'm a teacher if you're new to my channel. That's why I'm able to get quite a lot of sewing done at the moment. And I'm sewing mainly in the evenings. And then sometimes I've given myself like the afternoon to sew if Ruby and Lola are quite happy doing something or they're out and about. So I have got plans for the Helen's Closet Sandpiper two-piece um, swimming costume set. I keep saying costume, but it's not a swimming costume. It's like this gorgeous, I'll put a picture in, um, top and then bottoms. So the fabric that Ruby has chosen is this really beautiful mint black lilac and white fabric I got from Semi Sunshine. So that's going to be a top and bottoms for Ruby. And then Lola has chosen this amazing mermaid, um, look how gorgeous that is, iridescent um, swimwear fabric from, this was from Like So Amazing and I've got two metres because I'm going to make myself the Zara um, bikini set, the sew over it pattern using this fabric too. It's like ombre effect in terms of the colour, so it's got this really gorgeous like greeny colour in the middle and then the sort of blues towards the outside of the fabric so I'm going to have fun playing around with that and I've got two meters of that so it's definitely enough uh, to say something for Lola and also something for me and then I've also got this beautiful um, meadow type um, activewear fabric that I got from Hey so Sister I haven't got a huge amount of stretch actually but I'm going to use that to sew up a bikini for myself as well probably using the sew over at Zara bikini if I get on well with that pattern um but yeah i really love that fabric so they're not cut out as you can see i'm still waiting for the pattern to arrive from the fold line so when i printed the zara uh, bikini pattern copy shop i didn't realize that there was two files that i needed to upload so i've only printed half of the pattern so i'm waiting for the second half to arrive um and then the sandpiper um costume i've made that loads i made it last year did i make it the year before i can't remember i can't remember how long it's been out for I can't find the pattern anywhere. I've looked, I've had all my patterns out. I've got them stored in boxes here, there and everywhere, but I've had them all out. I've been through all of these. I've got them organized in categories. So I've got trousers and clots. I've got all my dresses. These are my paper patterns. And then I've got um, tops, blouses, t-shirts, jumper patterns all together. And then I've got um, like underwear, swimwear, hats, like the water bottle bag pattern will be with that and then I've got all my coats and jackets I've had all of them out and I cannot find it so I've had to get it copy shop printed again which isn't a bad thing um I'm just really annoyed with myself so hopefully that will arrive in the next couple of days then I have got plans for a Tilly the Buttons Mabel dress using the fabric that came in the um Hey so Sister summer project box this year so I know I've talked about last year's box it's this gorgeous I have to get it it's this beautiful cotton fabric um I just think it's absolutely stunning so I've cut that out and it's ready to go that's going to be the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress but I'm going to hack the skirt I'm going to try and do a gathered tiered skirt and hopefully do that sort of midi length um, I'm going to play around with that. I've got the tears all cut out, ready to go. I'm just going to play around with the length of the skirt and see what that looks like. Then I have got some fabric from Hey So Sister. Uh, this beautiful fabric. Let me hold it up. It's a cotton lawn. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I want to turn that into the Sew Over It Sophia dress. Um, the version that's got the elastic in the skirt at the back and the tie detail at the back as well. I think that's going to work so nicely for that pattern. Um, and then I've also got this fabric and I'm going to use this fabric, I think, to sew up the Vicky Sews Una dress. I'm very, very excited about that too. So as usual, tons of plans. 
Um, I'm really glad that I've already made a start on my holiday sewing. So hopefully it'll mean that I'm not up until midnight the night before we go on holiday um, sewing some of those things. Um, I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to and seeing all of the things that I've been making, hearing some of my plans and seeing some of the fabrics. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you, as always, for coming back time and time again. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.